Hello, welcome to Jibrin Angle on Oweleke TV. My name is Jibrin, and this is my angle. Um, I want to I want us to um read together what uh, uh the former governor of Anambra State, uh, Peter Obi, wrote on his X page. And I think it's interesting, and uh, you don't want to miss what I'll be saying. I, I, I'll be I'll be interjecting. I will be making the point in um, as I read on, but um, there is a major point I intend making at the end of um, of uh, of the article. So uh, hang on and uh, just um, hear me out. Let's read together. Uh, before then, uh, thank you for joining me on this monologue once again. All right, let's go on. I, I just read a disturbing comment in the media, in the media space attributed to one of the supposed political leaders in the country that the life of the vice president is in danger because of the faults recorded in his official aircraft. The leader went further to urge the, the federal government to purchase a new aircraft for the vice president. In making such a remark now, the speaker is ins insensitive and obviously unconcerned about the prevailing economic situation in the country. Again, okay, uh, let me say this before I continue. Um, this, is, this, is, this is reckless. It is insensitive, just like Peter will be. I agree with him on that, uh, just as he said. Um, it, is, it is callous for a mere vice president now don't i'm not commonizing him he's the second in command but when i say mayor vice president my vice president when you're a vice president you are inconsequential to the country as far as as long as the president is alive hail and hearty um because the constitution does not even arrogate any responsibility to you as a vice president so even if you die you you are inconsequential as far as the constitution is concerned so i do not understand why um why the vice president in the first place uh i don't expect the vice drive vice president to have a special uh an, a, a special aircraft i expect presidential fleets to take care of that we have presidential fleet i don't understand why we should have a uh, vice president having an independent independent aircraft to to actually travel around that like one that is one secondly for god's sake if an aircraft has a fault why can't it why, why can't it be fixed I, I, why because an aircraft developed a fault the aircraft that belongs to the vice president developed a fault so as such if they have to replace it buying to buy a new aircraft for the vice president who the hell is the vice president for god's sake even the one Tinubu did we, we, we everybody we all hell rain hell and brimstone against him now we're talking about the vice president for God's sake, what does these people take us for? Why are these people treating Nigeria, Nigeria as a nation, a wonderful country like this? Why are they treating Nigeria? Why are they behaving as if every other Nigerian is a rag? This is unbelievable. So if the aircraft developed a problem, let them fix it for the vice president. In the first place, the vice president is not supposed to have a special aircraft. Why can't the vice president use commercial airlines? What is wrong there? What is wrong in vice president? And besides, where, where is he going? Where, where is he supposed to be? Where is he traveling to? For God's sake, I, I don't, I don't get it. This is unbelievable. All right, um, I read on. That Nigerians are facing untold hardship at this moment is no secret. Obviously, says Peter Obi. Obviously. With all this bankrupt, as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria is almost bankrupt. Uh, our budget, we are running at deficit. We are highly indebted, indebted left, right, and center. And uh, even at that, we are still, we are still, we are still collecting, we are still uh, collecting more, more loans internationally. Obviously, we are funding all these people's, all these reckless corrupt rapacious politicians like ostentatious lifestyle with obviously with the money the loans we collected we we are not utilizing our government is there the, our government is not utilizing these loans for capital projects they are just utilizing it for their for, for themselves 
Unfortunately, I read on. Such a provoking call is coming from a person who probably is obviously or is obvious of the fact that Nigeria at the present has a at present rather has a continued to man I beg your pardon. I start again. Such a provoking call is coming from a person who probably is obvious obvious of the fact that Nigeria at present has continued to manifest every trait of a failed state. That's my point. Honestly, even though we cannot, we can't call it a failed state right now, all the indices point to that, that Nigeria is already a failed state. I read on. We are today among one of the 11 worst governed African nations in the last 10 years. We are also among the 20 most hungry nations in the world. With our people facing worsening mass poverty, extreme hunger, and starvation. Now, if you if you go through the list of these twenty most hungry countries, or uh, or the ten uh, or the other eleven worst governed African countries, there is something that is that makes us different from other the other rest nineteen and the other rest ten countries in this demography. What is that? And that is, we are richer than these countries. We are bigger than these countries. We are greater than these countries. We have everything more than these countries. We have all it takes. Some of these countries, they are poor countries in various ways. Um, they are not as great as Nigeria. That is why, I, I, that is why being on this list is a shame to us. Being on this list alone, if we want to go by ratio, by who we are, what we are, the kind of wealth that God has blessed us with, both human and natural resources that God has blessed us with, that is capable enough to actually place us among the world richest, among the world richest economies. Uh, if we are to go by that, by this ratio, we are supposed to be the number one worst among these ten and all 20 countries. So that is just the point. We have all it takes, yet we are rated among these countries that are worst governed and the hungriest. It is a shame. It's an embarrassment to us, not just our leaders, but even to us, our led, being our, the ones that are led, even to everyone, every Nigerian. It's a shame to all of us, honestly. I'll come back to the why it's a shame to the we the shame should be on every on all we Nigerians, not just our leaders. At the end of this message, uh, you you get to understand why I I I I included us in this whole shameful act. Our nation remains the poverty capital of the world, with our per capita income crashing further from seventeen hundred dollars in twenty twenty three to. 1109 this year are these not the issues that should be prioritized by committed leaders of course this is peter will be asking our national electricity grid has so far collapsed eight times this year alone and 105 times in the last 10 years plunging our small businesses into great losses and households into darkness You heard that. This national grid collapse is still people, Nigeria, I think we have about nine states. <laughs> Excuse me. The nine states that are affected by this, this is still going on at this, at, the, at, the, at this moment. This is what we are suffering from. Yet, all our leaders does, especially our current leaders, under the under Tunibu's leadership, all they are after is just spending our money on their on 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 their comf on on their comfortable lives, making giving them a more comfortable life than than they already than they need than they deserve. A comfortable life that even on their own they can afford it, but no, they just keep siphoning government money to actually add to what they have and make themselves even much more comfortable than they deserve. 
In the past 15 months, several businesses have closed down or become distressed due to the harsh economic environment in the country. This is true. I think I made it. I, I made a monologue on this issue of our economy. Um, actually, uh, going. I think um, going down. Was it two or three days ago? I made a monologue on that, where I mentioned the seaport and the airport. How um, inactivity is growing. The inactivity at our seaports and our airports has become. I think airports about fifty percent. A seaport, I think about thirty percent or so. I, I I think that is the statistics or whatever. The inactivity there has has really really grown so high, and it's still growing. Which 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 portends bankruptcy in our economy. That's just the reality. What does Nigeria's vice president need a new jet for? Please ask him. And what value are all presidential and vice presidential trips adding to our present situation? That is the reality. Tinubu has traveled several times. Sometimes he will lie that he's traveling for official visit. Now he, he goes, he basically goes there for health checkup, health is, uh, 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 checkup, medical checkup here and there. Uh, to, to uh, probably for them to, 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 uh, to, to load his system again with multiple drugs to just keep him alive. What has, have we achieved from all these multiple trips by the president and his vice? Nothing. All we have achieved is more debts, more loans, and worse econo economic situation. Things are getting worse by the day. Inflation is getting higher by the day. Nothing. No benefit. Unlike during Obasanjo, I remember during Obasanjo, Obasanjo was globetrotting then. And then people were asking or whatever, but at least he achieved so many. He achieved so much. Then we needed our in Nigeria's image to be to be corrected, uh, to be reversed because it was the image then. Nigeria's image was very at a very very low level. So Obasanjo needed to do well. And besides, he actually achieved debt forgiveness for us. So his journey was he actually did a lot. He achieved a lot. Obasanjo achieved a lot in his globe trotting then. And his own then was expedient. His globetrotting then was expedient. We understood then that because we just we were just we just we were just ushered into the de democratic dispensation. So we needed the Nigerian image needed to be corrected, needed to be reversed, a sort of. So we, it was it was of necessity for him to do those take to those journeys, and it 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 affected us positively. It affected our economy as well positively. But in this case, we don't need it. It is not necessary. What we need is to, for people, for our leader to sit down at home and walk. Instead of deep throating, for God's sake. That is just the reality. It was not until 20, 2014 that Indonesia, with sustainable economic growth of over 6% annually for the past 10 years, adding about 50% to both her GDP and, G, GDP and GDP per capita decide to buy a presidential jet. Indonesia of all country. Not until 2014. Used by both the president, president and the vice president. And I don't even know why the vice president should. U.S. have it. These are rich countries can afford it. But not Nigeria. We are rich, but we are, we are not rich after all. Because... If you if your if your debt is higher than your income, what well, you are you are not rich, you are poor. That's exactly what is happening right now. We are highly indebted. We have mortgaged our our resources, our natural resources. So everything, all the resources we get, especially from the oil, we use it to service debt because it's been paid. But we we have borrowed money. In exchange for those, this oil, probably for how many, nobody knows. Nobody is telling us how, for how long we'll keep giving out this oil in place of what the money we borrowed. Yeah? That's the reality. The vice president travels mostly in the country's national airline, Garud, Gar, Garuda, Indonesia. That is for Indonesia. The vice president travels, of course. Huh? It travels on commercial airlines. That is just the reality. But our own case for where? And since we have recently undeservedly 
we have recently undeservedly bought one, it should be used on essential inevitable trips of the president and vice president. I appeal to the president, vice president, and our public office holders that our present and precarious situation calls only for minimal and highly contributory inevitable travels. It is time to sit down and find solutions to our litany of challenges for the well-being of the people and the development of our country. Nigeria will rise again if the leadership can commit to selfless service. A new Nigeria is possible if we can get our priorities right. Peter will be. Now, that, this brings me to my comment that I promised to make at the end of this. The comment is actually to attack Peter Obi because um, Peter Obi, for those of you who have been following me for some time, you know how much I have I have been so critical of Peter Obi since after the election. Peter Obi was, um, during the election, he was someone everybody saw, especially me. I saw him as someone that God has chosen to be our Messiah, to liberate Nigeria. Not take, actually, not automatically taking us off, but at least laying a foundation, laying a positive foundation that someone can build upon. Um, a sort of, so, but he failed us. And because of that, since then, I have not, I've, I've, I've been critical of him because I felt and I still feel that he could have done better than just going to court. He could have done far better than just going to court. Because if he had done better than far by, by better than going to job mayor court, um, possibly, I'm not saying guaranteed, but possibly, Tinubu couldn't have been the president today. That is just the reality. He couldn't have been the president today, and that is so. Um, Peter Obi should shut his mouth up. Um, all he's doing, he 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 was in the position to actually liberate Nigeria. He was in the position to actually take Nigeria out of this corruption debacle. That is just the reality. But um, he, he, he missed that opportunity. He completely missed that opportunity. So what, what is he coming to lecture us or whatever? The one thing about him, one thing good about him, he's just good at statistics. He's good at figures. Uh, he has so many in his head or whatever. My problem, what he's not good at is courage. He lacks courage. He's a weak like Consider him. Not totally weakly, because if you consider his record um, when he was the governor of Anambra State, a weakling couldn't have actually pulled that off because I still consider him not, it's not a past me considering. That is a fact. Because going by his record, honestly, he should be, he is rated. Nobody, it's not a public rating, but that is just the reality, the fact on ground. Rated, he's rated as the best governor ever in the history of Nigeria. But best performed governor. I don't want to go through that so much. It's a, a whole long list of evidence of facts that that makes him the best governor. No governor, even no governor in Nigeria, even gets close gets close to that record. At least not yet. And that was why I saw I I, I saw we 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 all saw a glimpse of hope in him prior to 2023 presidential election. So uh, with that, pulling that off from Anand Brasil, I think he's that courageous. He's strong. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't just say he, I wouldn't just call him a weakling. But honestly, he exhibited um, the sign of weakness in the, uh, in the 2023 general election because he chickened out. He chickened out. He lacked the courage. He lacked the resilience, the tenacity. He lacked the gut to actually... Um, actually uh, 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 take the bull by the horn to actually call the bluff of the powers that be. And now he comes every day. He just comes with uh, just criticizing the look. We are this is we have gone beyond beyond just criticism. We are, this is, we are tired. People who've been criticizing for years, decade upon decade. This is we need action this time, and the action we needed was for Peter Obi to stand against the government when this election was stolen from us. Call out for protests, mass protests that people should occupy the streets. That is what we expected from Peter Obi. 
But for where? He chickened out. He was a weakly. He became, he suddenly turned a weakling. Of course, because um, he doesn't want to be incarcerated. He's avoiding being probably being killed. He's avoiding being, his freedom being taken away from him. So, and that is why, uh, honestly, someone like him does not actually deserve the kind of support he got. Because I eventually found out that, honestly, we gave Peter Obi too much support, more, the, over, the, more than the, more the, the support, much more support than he deserved. Because the kind of support Peter Obi got was the best, the highest and the best in the history of Nigerian politics. It was organic. It was organic. No monetary inducement. People, it was a natural followership. An overwhelming natural followership from the east, west, south, north. Everyone, he, he had this followership, for God's sake. Such kind of followership, such kind of organic followership was not only unprecedented, nobody ever garnered such kind of followership in the history of politics in Nigeria. But it was supposed to be, that sort of followership was supposed to be for a true freedom fighter. A true freedom fighter who can actually call the bluff of the government, who is ready to die or be incarcerated or lose his freedom for the people. Who is ready to take blood for the people? For Peter Obi, for where? He is not, he didn't measure up to the occasion at all. And this is why I keep criticizing him and I will keep criticizing him and I do not see him even going near to what he got to in 2023 again. You know why? Because, look, if he wins, if he becomes president, honestly, I will be the happiest person. But the reality does not say so. I'm a realist. That is just who I am. A pragmatist. That is just it. Peter Obi will never get close to that again. He did that in 2023. Such opportunity. This, that kind of opportunity is what we refer to opportunity come. There are several opportunities that come more than once. But opportunities like this that are rare. Very rare to come by. Opportunity like this that was unprecedented. The first in the history of Nigeria. He blew it. Opportunities like this don't come by again. That is, it is, that all sorts kind of opportunity epitomizes the saying that goes, opportunity comes but once. That is just it. He will not get that close again, unfortunately. Unfortunately. I, it's not, I, it's not, I, I'm not pleased to say that, but that is just the reality. And that, is my angle.